Welcome back to Disturbed Reality. Since the death of Colombian kingpin Pablo Escobar in 1993, and the following disbandment of the Medellin cartel, without doubt, the Mexico-based Sinaloa cartel filled the void left behind by the Colombians, going on to become arguably the most recognisable criminal organisation of the 21st century. Recognisable names such as Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, Ismael El Mayo Zambada, and the Beltran Leyva brothers all came through under the Sinaloan Federation and were among the most successful traffickers in world history. In recent weeks, the Sinaloa cartel has once again been the topic of conversation within the mainstream following the capture of El Mayo Zambada, the last of the original Sinaloa cartel kingpins. The future of the Sinaloan Federation is up in the air, with various accusations of betrayal involved in the capture of El Mayo. El Mayo was captured alongside one of the sons of El Chapo, Joaquin Guzman Lopez, aka El Guero. The pair were captured after a private plane landed on a small airstrip in El Paso, Texas. One of the leading theories is that it was a setup. According to some, Zambada was reportedly lured by Guzman Lopez under false pretenses of looking to buy property in Mexico that led to his arrest. Upon meeting with Guzman Lopez, some sources state that El Mayo was kidnapped against his will, and alongside Guzman Lopez, they then travelled by private plane to El Paso, Texas, where the FBI and various US agencies were waiting for them. If the accusations of betrayal are true, we could be in for a civil war within the Sinaloa cartel. Ismael Zambada's faction of the Sinaloa cartel is now led by his son, Mayito Flaco Zambada, and only time will tell whether he declares war on Los Chapitos, the remaining sons of El Chapo, Jesus and Ivan Guzman. Thankfully, no violence has occurred as of yet, However, back in the day, when allegedly Joaquin El Chapo Guzman backstabbed Alfredo Beltran Leyva by giving him up to the authorities, it wasn't until months later where Arturo Beltran Leyva and his brothers declared war on El Chapo and branded him a traitor. Again, time will tell whether we see a full-out war between Los Chapitos and Maito Flaco. I don't suspect that we will see any fracturing within Zambada's faction of the Sinaloa cartel, as right now, they have the unifying factor of being at war with CJNG in various states, including Nayarit, Zacatecas, and Chiapas. It suits their interests and future to remain united, as they continue to do battle with the Jalisco-based criminal group. Regardless, the Sinaloa cartel from inception until now have had a history of violence, whether that be due to various internal conflicts that they've encountered over the years, or whether that be due to the countless wars that they've had with rivals. Compared to other Mexican cartels, the Sinaloan Federation do not have the reputation of being excessively brutal, though in reality, this is somewhat of a myth. They have still shown a capability of extreme violence, and today, we discuss some of the worst videos linked with the Sinaloa cartel. But nevertheless, let's get into the topic at hand. Number 1. Beltran Leyva Castration and Beheading The following clip is a byproduct of a civil war between the Beltran Leyva brothers and El Chapo, which lasted from around 2008 until 2014. As mentioned, the war started due to the fact that Arturo Beltran Leyva suspected El Chapo of being involved in the arrest of his brother, Alfredo Beltran Leyva, aka El Machomo, the Ant, in January of 2008. The speculation for Chapo's motives vary, but one rumour indicates that Chapo gave up Alfredo Beltran Leyva to ensure that his son Ivan would be released by authorities. Arturo Beltran Leyva, El Jefe de Jefes, or in English, the Boss of Bosses, immediately suspected El Chapo of betrayal and covertly plotted revenge. What people don't know, at the time, Arturo Beltran Leyva was arguably the most successful trafficker within the Sinaloan Federation, with claims that he was pushing more weight than both El Chapo and El Mayo at the time. And considering his success and wealth, Many suspected that he would have garnered more support from senior Sinaloa cartel figures in his upcoming war with El Chapo. However, this wasn't the case. El Mayo chose to side with El Chapo, essentially banishing the Beltran Leivas from the Sinaloa cartel. 
One of the reasons being was possibly a tactical one. If both Maya and Chapo could defeat the Beltran Lavers, then with that comes the drug routes and corridors ran by the BLO organization. Also, another factor may have been that despite how successful Arturo Beltran Labor was, he was a paranoid cokehead who was often not sober. This may have also deterred the likes of El Azul and El Mayo supporting him over Chapo. After a couple of months, the Beltran Labor organization publicly decried El Chapo as a snitch and declared war upon him, kickstarting what was called at the time the Sinaloa Civil War. In May of 2008, Edgar Guzman, the son of El Chapo, was gunned down in Sinaloa by multiple Sicarios armed with AK-47s. Many suspected the hitmen to belong to the Beltran Labor organization. Other rumors in Sinaloa, however, seem to suggest that Chapo's son may have been killed by mistake. Some allege that El Mayo's then head of security, Macho Prieto, authorized the killing as he was given information that the pickup truck that Edgar was driving belonged to a notorious Beltran Labor Sicario known as Chalito Arujo, the terror of Culiacan, a man who had a personal vendetta against both El Chapo and El Mayo for his own reasons. In fact, at some point, we will make a video about him. Regardless, the war between the BLO and the remaining factions of the Sinaloa cartel would continue for several years, eventually fizzling out by the mid-2010s after the capture and killings of various high-ranking BLO members, including Arturo and Hector Beltran Leyva. The war produced incredibly graphic imagery, with both sides resorting to decapitations, mutilations, and a whole host of horrific terroristic acts. One such video is the infamous decapitation and castration of an alleged Sinaloa cartel Sicario at the hands of Beltran Labor operatives. The video actually comes with a lot of misinformation, mainly due to narco news sites. Some websites describe the video to also contain a flaying, which does not happen, though we will touch on that in a moment, and other sources state that the video was released by La Linea, though that also doesn't appear to be the case. That can be ascertained from the clothing in which the Sicarios are wearing in the video. They are wearing vests with the acronym FEDA, which stands for Fuerzas Especiales de Arturo, indicating they are Sicarios belonging to the BLO. Also, a song is playing in the video, which some say is dedicated to Arturo Beltran Leva. In relation to when the video was released, I cannot find an exact date, though it would have been released in the early 2010s. The video itself isn't filmed in the best of quality, and is very fuzzy, though what you see is still enough to make you feel sick to the pit of your stomach. The clip itself is just over 6 minutes in length, and the video has seemingly been shot in a forest location in the middle of nowhere during daytime. Initially, it's hard to make out what is going on, but you eventually see that the victim has essentially been strung up via rope so that he is hanging upside down. The victim's face has also been covered in duct tape. He is surrounded by Sicarios, some of which are revealed to be wearing vests embroidered with the letters F-E-D-A. As mentioned, music, a narco corrido, has been dubbed over much of the video. The victim, who is hanging upside down, can be seen violently swinging back and forth, twisting and turning as he tries his best to evade the grasp of various cartel members who are surrounding him. Several of the hitmen hold him, while one proceeds to castrate him with what appears to be a small knife. The victim's struggles are incredibly violent, but the Sicario literally grabs his privates and severs them. He then throws them into a plastic box, which looks like a cooler, which is resting under the victim to catch the blood. Where the victim's privates used to be is just now a gaping wound, and the bright yellow fat around the pubic region has been totally exposed. The music in the video is extremely loud, but you still hear faint but violent screams in the background. Once the victim has been castrated, he continues to struggle away. After a few more seconds, the victim begins to struggle less and less. Two Sicarios then grab him, they grab an arm each and outstretch them, totally immobilizing the victim. The hitman who performed the castration then begins to slowly behead the victim with a butcher-style knife. The plastic bucket below immediately begins to collect with the dripping blood, almost like something you would see in a slaughterhouse. 
The front of her neck is sliced through extremely quickly, and the blood leaks into the bucket like a waterfall. Once the blade starts touching the spinal cord, it causes the victim's body to viciously twitch, though eventually the twitching does stop. It takes a while for the Sicario to cut through the spine, but he eventually does. The Sicario then removes the duct tape that was wrapped around the victim's head. People mistakenly describe this as the alleged flaying. At this point, the hitman then cuts the remaining skin and flesh at the back of the victim's neck, and the beheading is now complete. The Sicario, who is wearing a Punisher-style ski mask, then holds the bloody head up to the camera, and you can clearly see that no flaying took place. After several seconds, he then places the severed head into the plastic box. The music then stops at this point. The remainder of the video then shows the Sicarios beginning to dismember the rest of the victim's corpse. They start at the arms and cut the arms off at the shoulders, and then cut the arms in half before throwing the body parts into the plastic box. Due to how the body was hung when decapitated, pretty much all of the blood at this point had already drained from the victim's corpse. How the victim is hanging as they dismember him, again, is extremely reminiscent of a slaughterhouse. The video ends as the hitmen begin to cut the victim's legs off at the thighs. At the time of its release, this video was considered to be one of, if not the most brutal cartel video around. Number 2. Sinaloan Barbecue. This video stems from the ongoing war in Sonora State, a war zone in which the Sinaloa cartel are major players and violence generators. The violence in Sonora is primarily due to the current war between Los Chapitos and Los Salazar, who are also allied with Los Cazadores. Los Salazar were once upon a time a group who were long affiliated with the Sinaloa cartel, all the way back to the days of El Chapo, and they eventually became an armed wing within the criminal organization. The Salazars were a trafficking family from Sonora, and they formed close bonds with El Chapo in the early years. They were among his most trusted allies. As the years passed, they became a major faction within the organization. Following the third and final arrest of El Chapo in 2016, the Salazar faction began working under Los Chapitos, the sons of El Chapo for several years. In fact, Los Salazar were Los Chapitos' main weapon originally in the state of Sonora when they declared war upon the Caborca cartel. The Caborca cartel being founded by now-captured veteran drug trafficker Rafa Caro Quintero. In recent times, however, for whatever reason, Los Salazar announced their independence as they split away from Los Chapitos and the Sinaloa cartel, and an all-out war ensued, causing violence levels in Sonora to spike. In the last few months alone, we have covered several graphic videos on the channel stemming from the ongoing conflict. The Caborca cartel have been hit hard in recent years due to the arrest of prominent leaders, such as Caro Quintero, though they still remain a force in the area. The following clip actually stems from the war zone in Sonora, though it is several years old. The video is believed to be the result of an internal dispute. The clip itself is three and a half minutes long and is shot in a desert type location during a scorching hot day. As you play the video, you are met with the sight of a captive who is sitting on the ground, surrounded by heavily armed hitmen. He has rope tied around his neck, presumably the other end of the rope is tied to a tree to stop the victim running. He is aggressively interrogated by a menacing sounding Sicario. The interrogation reads as follows, and it lasts just under one and a half minutes. The interrogator asks, why are you here? The captive replies, I'm here because I was selling crystal meth. The hitman asks, who do you work for? The captive replies, I work for El Durango's mob. The interrogator asks, how long have you been here and why are you here? The captive reiterates, I'm here because I was selling crystal meth. What else can you tell me? The interrogator asks. The captive replies, my brother's name is El Nono, and between my brother and I, we killed several people. The interrogator asks, who did you kill? We killed Gail, says the captive. The interrogator asks, where did you kill him? The captive replies, at Hotel Toxa, we were given a ride by Abel in a taxi. The vehicle's number is 62. From there, we proceeded to Altar, Altar in Sonora. We were under the orders of El Shabeto and Durango. The interrogator asks why. The captive replies, because we belong to Grupo Delta. The hitman states, so you belong to Grupo Delta. The captive replies, yes. 
The interrogator reiterates, you belong to Grupo Delta. The captive replies, yes sir. The hitman asks, why did you kill Gale? The captive replies, it was done so on the orders of El Durango because of a car that was sold to him and afterwards exploded. The interrogator replies, who gives you the orders? The captive responds, who gives us the orders? The orders were given by El Durango and Shubeta. The interrogator asks one final question. Hmm, what other operators do you guys have in Caborca? The captive replies, we currently have El Nono, La Rosa, El J, El Samantha, and El Hera. The interrogation then abruptly stops due to a jump cut, and the jump cut leads into a scene of depravity. You are met with the sight of a victim, who is engulfed in bright orange flames that are churning out toxic black smoke. The victim is rolling around as his entire body is on fire, including his face. The sight is hard to explain, but the victim is rolling from side to side, but his body is seizing up due to the intense heat. He doesn't scream, instead he lets out one loud guttural noise. That sounds strange. It sounds animalistic, almost like an extremely low-pitched, drawn-out dog bark. The man's body has seized up so much that it is stuck in the position you would make if you were to sit on a chair, but he still manages to rock from side to side. You hear him spit and cough up phlegm, as the clothes he is wearing literally fuse into his skin. One Sicario can be heard laughing in a condescending and sarcastic manner. He laughs at the victim as he still tries to rock back and forth. Out of nowhere, the victim lets out a deep pain-induced exhale, followed by sounds that are again hard to explain. Imagine somebody getting strangled and imagine the sounds. That's what it sounds like. The victim continues to let out more groans, and he continues to spit and cough. Imagine, every breath he takes at this point is filled with hot, toxic black smoke, cooking him from the inside. The video then jump cuts once again, and it then shows you to when the victim was first set on fire. It shows the sheer amount of accelerant that was poured onto the victim. When the flames were first lit, they easily reached around 10 foot high. After the victim was set on fire, he barrel rolls for several feet before letting out a horrific screech. The Sicarios just stand around watch whilst laughing and chatting amongst themselves. Intermittently, the victim lets out piercing screeches. As you continue to watch, the footage then goes over what you've already previously seen. You just see the victim slowly die, engulfed in flames. The last sounds the victim makes are not screams nor groans, but instead, weird burping sounds. The video ends there. For me, fire videos are always among the worst to watch. I really struggle with them, and this is a bad one. Number 3. The Joker for lack of a better term, this video is one of the more unique cartel punishments that I've seen that was followed by a swift execution. The punishment that was dished out to the victim who was an alleged Zeta member is known on these shores as a Glasgow grin or a Chelsea smile. A Glasgow grin, also known as a Glasgow smile or a Chelsea smile, is a brutal facial wound where the victim's cheeks are cut from the corners of the mouth towards the ears. This creates a wound that resembles a grotesque, exaggerated smile, similar to the Joker. The term Glasgow grin originates from gang-related violence in Glasgow, Scotland, where it was sometimes inflicted as a form of punishment or intimidation. Usually in Glasgow, the Razor Gangs, as they were called, used for punishment especially on those who were informants or snitches. The resulting scar can be disfiguring and last a lifetime, and is often associated with criminal activity and violent subcultures. The technique was then allegedly adopted by football hooligans in England who supported Chelsea Football Club. The video itself is short and is only 1 minute and 42 seconds in length. Much like is the case with many cartel videos, the setting is that of a wooded rural area. The video is shot during daytime. The opening segment is a brief interrogation. You see the victim who is sitting down on the ground wearing a blue shirt and shorts, and either side of him are two Sicarios. One is carrying what appears to be an assault rifle, and the other is carrying a knife. The victim is briefly interrogated, and in the interrogation he confirms that he works for Los Etas. He also mentions of assassinations that were ordered by higher-up members of the Zetas, and even implicates local police in these assassinations. He also states that he works for a female boss known as La Perla, or the Pearl in English. The Sinello and Sicarios give off a vibe that they are disgusted with the victim for so willingly spilling the beans. The lack of respect that they have for him is palpable. 
Instead of a point-blank bullet to the head, they decide to make the victim suffer a little first. The Sicario who is holding the knife bends down next to the victim while he insults him. He then places the small knife into the victim's mouth and begins to slice from the corner of the victim's mouth and up through his cheek. The grimace on the victim's face paints a picture worth a thousand words. Blood immediately begins to leak down his face and onto his neck, chest and shirt. Somehow, the captive remains remarkably composed, despite the blade slicing through his cheek. The Sicario then does the other side of the mouth. Once again, the captive grimaces in pain, but lets out zero screams or sounds. The Sicario takes a while while cutting the other side, and he addresses the camera as he does so. The victim's face looks like something out of a horror movie. The bottom of his face is completely covered in blood. He looks like a grinning jack-o'-lantern. Once the victim's face has been cut open, the camera fixates on him for a short while, and he blankly stares into the camera. You then realise that the Sicario who cut his face is fiddling around in his pockets, and this causes the victim to look around frantically in panic, again, all without making a sound. The sight of his face looking around in terror is actually creepy. The Sicario then pulls out a pistol, cocks it, and the captive looks around one last time before he is shot right in the crown of the head, causing his body to drop and go completely limp. The video ends as the victim's body seizes up. But anyway, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed it if you can enjoy this sort of content. I could have added one more video to this list, the infamous chainsaw decapitation video, though I've covered that a couple of times on the channel and didn't want to go over old ground again, for those who are wondering why I never included it. But if you're new here, if you could smash the like, hit subscribe, that would be much appreciated. If you want to follow me on social media and get in touch, you can drop me a DM, link to my Twitter is in the pinned comment, as is a link to my Twitch. But anyway guys, as always, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next one.